Yeah, it's like ambulance going everywhere. And yesterday, when I actually took a stroll yesterday, mm. and I saw this, the cut that the ambulance, the, 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 the parad- paramedics push, right? And I saw this white cloth over the cut. Oh, shit. Like, oh, my God. Damn. Yeah, I just I just run away. I mean, Oh, <laughs> gosh. Welcome to Talk Some More, the video podcast dedicated to featuring young creators, entrepreneurs, and ordinary people with extraordinary stories. This show is distributed on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes, so feel free to follow us for the latest episodes. Hi, welcome guys to a special episode of Talk Some More. Um, This is the fifth episode, and I thought I would do something special every five episodes and just, um, you know, do the talk by myself. So um, if you guys are interested in what I have to say, stick around. If not, uh, feel free to check out the other episodes. But today, I just want to talk about, like, what's been going on in the world recently. We are living in a time where it's it's unprecedented and I never thought I would be living in such a situation. Um, the coronavirus um, is affecting the whole world at the moment. And I think this is a good opportunity to share um, on my side what's going on in Singapore where I live um, and also speak to some of my friends who are in different countries. I've, I've been blessed to have the opportunity to make many friends around the world um, and so um, I, I did a pre-recording of this, of um, of them using video call to call me and, uh, you know, just explaining how their situation is like. Because um, every country has a different circumstance and every government is handling this a bit differently. So it's kind of interesting to see uh, what life is like in, in, under, in other countries. Um, and yeah, just let's just um, dive into it. Uh, maybe I'll just begin by... Um, what's uh, explaining the situation here in Singapore. Uh, The situation in Singapore has literally just ramped up. Just about four hours ago, um, the Prime Minister made an address to the country announcing more stringent measures that we're stepping up. So um, he has yet to use the word lockdown. And I think that's a very sensitive word in Singapore because we don't want to put the whole country into panic and it's very easy to you know, stir panic in Singapore. Uh, we are all very kiasu. Um, for anyone foreign listening to that, kiasu, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dialect uh, in Hokkien. Um, literally translated into English is scared to lose. Um, and when we scared to lose, we want to be the first at everything, the first to be at the supermarket to grab everything because we don't want to lose out. So that's, a, that's definitely a problem in any city out there. Um, with all the hoarding of food and all that. But we try our best to um, keep everyone calm. Um, the influencers out there, some of my friends who um, have a presence on social media, they are putting out messages, trying to get people to, you know, listen to them, um, to keep calm and, you know, not panic during this time. But of course, not everybody listens uh, to even the prime minister advising. But anyway, um, the situation in Singapore has... Um, uh, changed because recently the number of cases has jumped a bit. Um, I think about 50 new cases uh, yesterday. But the scary thing is that in those 50 cases, usually we are able to trace most of these cases and most of these cases can be linked to one another. But in this case, we had about 15, 15 untraceable cases, which means we don't know where the hell they got the disease from. So it's very hard to figure out where they've been who has been in contact with them and um, it's very hard to isolate it. So I I think right about now, it's a good time to just uh, go over to um, the different interviews I had with uh, a few of my friends in different countries. Um, so just a disclaimer, uh, some of my friends are in countries with very delicate government. So um, I try not to push for uh, comments uh, that have to do with politics. Um, I, I, I just question on how they are doing and what life is like there. Um, but um, take, take this as a... Take, take all, everything that they say with a pinch of salt because these are just average people. Um, they are my friends. They're just telling me how, how they feel and it should not reflect anything about the, the country there. That's for your own judgment. All right, first up, we have uh, my friend Alex from the Philippines. Um, I know I knew her back in uh, university when we were studying in Melbourne. Um, so yeah, let's just check in on her and see how she's doing. Hi, Alex. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, so um, yeah, I just wanted to like chat with you and find out 
like? How's it going over there? Um, I think we're on day number seventeen or eighteen. I'm not quite sure of the lockdown. So they closed down everything. Well, it kind of started as like a um, community quarantine. Mm-hmm. That's how they phrased it, and then that didn't really work out for the first one or two days, first couple of days. So they made it an enhanced community quarantine, yeah. um, which basically, technically, it doesn't mean a lockdown, but everything is sort of locked down. Um, like for example, you've been to Manila, right? Yes. And how every everything's in sort of like villages, yeah. Rather, in like gated villages and yeah. communities. Um, uh, so basically, my village. We're not allowed to go out of our house. We're not allowed to jog. We're not allowed to like just go to a friend's house and just hang out. Um, you're basically stuck inside with your family, um, or you know whoever you're with. Because I have friends who live in condos in BGC or Makati, and they they just hang out with themselves. Like they literally have no one to talk to. Oh, okay, okay. So- yeah. So like even like you were saying like Molly lives like down the street and even though it's in the same village you can't see each other. Yeah, she she lives like three four, three to five streets over. Mm. And like I can easily walk to her place, but I can't go see her. Ah okay okay so so then how how is food being, how how do you guys deal with food? Um so they didn't close down the groceries, so the groceries are still open but. Um, you need a quarantine pass to go out of your house and actually go to the grocery because they have checkpoints yep. in specific locations. So you have to show your quarantine pass and then you can actually go and buy food. But um, a lot of people now are also doing deliveries. Mm-hmm. So, um, for example, certain suppliers are now offering their goods through Grab. Um, are you familiar with Grab? Yeah, yeah, we have Grab in Singapore. Yeah. Okay, so Grab, um, there's another thing called Lala Move. Mm -hmm. And then there's another thing. Well, there's Food Panda as well, which is like a delivery, like food delivery. So they're still allowed to deliver? Yeah, people are still delivering. And some some businesses are actually trying to stay open, which is pretty good. So like in terms of how often you can go and buy groceries, is is there a limit? Like once a week, once in two days? Um, Per family, there's no limit. Okay. Um, but in turn, so there there are curfew hours. You have to be home by seven. Okay. Um, PM, and then um, when you're actually in the grocery, they have they sort of place. I don't know if it's the same for every grocery, but they put chairs like spaced out Mm -hmm. for you to keep a certain distance away from the next person. Yeah. So, and they limit the amount of people allowed inside the grocery store. So. A normal trip to the grocery would be like what thirty minutes to an hour if you're buying for a whole family mm-hmm. for like a week. Yeah. Um, but then this one, my mom just went to the grocery a few days ago, and it took her like three hours, I think. Ooh. Because you, there's a line. To go yeah, in. yeah, I would expect yeah. that as well. Um, but in terms of like, I mean, you talk to your friends. Like, how is everyone doing? Are they kind of calm? Are they, you know? They understand the situation, or is it like you know you don't know what's going to happen next kind of thing? Um, I think everyone pretty much understands what's going on, uh, but in terms of like information giving like being given out in the news, I think it's better now. But then you still get the thing of the Philippines is that there's a lot of um, people who just spread information. Yeah. So a lot of it goes around through text. Like WhatsApp, everything is forwarded on Telegram, WhatsApp, and Viber, and yep. normal text messaging, Facebook as well. Okay, okay. Um, so you really have to fact check. Yeah. But everyone, everyone kind of knows that. Okay, we're on community quarantine. We shouldn't go out. Um, it's try as much as possible to stay home, unless you have no other choice. Hmm. Uh, everyone sort of like talking online, which is also good because it sort of keeps everyone sane. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and... Yeah, in terms of work as well, like, people are now working online using Zoom a lot, mm. using Google Hangouts, um, Facebook Messenger. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. So cool. a lot of people are using that. All right. So, um, I don't know. Is there anything special that's that that you think Philippines is doing that other countries might not be doing? Special? I don't think so. So I was talking to my friend yesterday, and he is a med student here in the Philippines, and he was explaining to me how um, Germany, for example, mm-hmm. have gotten like they they basically test more efficiently which is obvious because they have a lot of resources but here in the philippines the resources are so limited that um, a lot of them are actually being donated from overseas i think singapore just gave like a bunch of, i know that I, I don't know how many ppes but they gave like two ventilators mm. donated or like borrowed i don't know lent it or something and then um so my friend was saying that we recently approved the testing for antibodies. So apparently the testing for um, using the big machines yep. and everything, that's what we used and that's a lot slower. And because we have limited resources because those machines are so expensive, mm-hmm. that um, our amount of approved cases have been small. Yep. Like you, you, you can't really test that much because yeah. you don't have yeah. enough. And then, so they only approved the antibody testing two, well, not three days ago. And he was saying how in the next few days, we'd actually be seeing um, a huge spike in yeah. terms of Because you're, you're recording more, more numbers. Yeah. It's not that you are because, getting more infected. It takes, it's just yeah, recording it, it. Yeah, it takes like, what, a minute for you to figure out whether or not you have those antibodies. Mm. Whereas with the other test, it takes like two weeks. Okay, okay. So it's it's kind of more efficient, but then there's also the other people who keep saying no to mass testing. So it's just like, what's happening? Yeah, okay. there's a huge debate basically. Yeah, so okay, like um in Singapore right now, like um we have different levels of s- stay homes. So like for example, now if I I'm I'm having a slight cough and a bit of a fever, and so the 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 law has put down that I have to take a five days medical leave, like I can't leave the mm-hmm. house. But I think it's different over there since everybody is in lockdown already. Yeah. Yeah, so um, but is is there any other levels in there? or? Well, I, I wouldn't call it level. But maybe when we were first starting out the whole community quarantine thing, as soon as a building had a case, mm-hmm. that building was locked down. Okay. Yeah, so I have a friend who lives in, the, in an apartment building mm-hmm. and then... So they, they reported a couple, I think, or okay. just one person, I forgot, um, who got the virus. And then she went to the hospital because she was really sick. Yeah. And then um, when news got out, they immediately locked down that building. Like the admin sent out a memo and stuff like that. And then it was, it was going like that for a while um, until they shut the entire thing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So for this whole um, lockdown... Um, you, uh, how many more days do you guys have? I mean, supposed technically, be, yeah. Okay, technically, we're supposed to end lockdown either on April 14 or 15. Okay, so that's a month long, almost? Yeah, it started, it's supposed to be about a month, but I think it's going to extend. So everyone's sort of just anticipating the extension okay. in some way, um, which is really bad because... The Philippines is a third world country. Um, we have to sort of balance it between economics and like health yeah. in a way. Yeah. Because everyone basically stopped. Well, not everyone. Like most stopped working mm. and like nothing is moving. And there are so many people who need that money to survive. Yeah. 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 I understand. I was watching a documentary um, on India like how they are handling this situation and more most of them are more afraid of starving to death than actually catching the virus yeah. so i i can understand where you're coming from and it's definitely a i mean yeah it's a worse situation yeah. for the lower income people the the first day of the community quarantine they shut down most of the public transport mm-hmm. and you'd see um there's this main road in the philippines called edsa Okay. 
and that's where all the buses go. Yep. And usually the, the train lines are also there. Um, the amount of people on the streets waiting for a bus, um, they, they were like crawling into the car lanes. Oh, like it was okay, okay. it was so bad, um, yeah. Because there were there's no public transport and people had to go to work because that was the first day of the quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I think that's about it. Um, anything else? Like how how are you doing personally? Like, oh, I'm okay. So the advantages of being an architect is that you basically. <laughs> work at home all the time <laughs> and don't need to talk to anyone or anything yeah. so my family is going a bit crazy but i'm i'm okay all right that's great all right yeah. how thanks. are you um um this is only day two of me staying at home and i'm already really oh, but are bored you, are you alone i'm not alone my sister's out in the oh, living room okay. her her so her company is pretty big. So they started this work from home thing really early. My yeah. company technically hasn't actually started doing that yet. I'm just the one that's sick, so I'm home. But uh, mm. recently, the government just put out a notice uh, for all workplaces to work from home unless it is not possible, which means if you're in the labor sector, you're in the manufacturing, you need to yeah. use your hands, then so... that's the only reason why you should yeah, you should, should still go, go to work. work. Yeah, so for us, it's more of like the skeletal workforce. Mm -hmm. That's what they're calling it. So the skeletal workforce has to go to work. Yep. Um, and also the grocery people and the doctors, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but yeah, they've already called like the, the, the residents. You know how in medical school you have like the, yep, the resident, different years. Yep. The residents are like the final two years. Mm -hmm. um, they're already calling them up to the front lines. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because they need because, all the help they can get. Yeah, and some people are coming out of retirement just to help. Oh yeah, yeah. I think some nurses in Malaysia as well. They are doing that coming out of retirement because they just need all the help they can get. But yeah but at the same time they're also the ones that are more susceptible to get sick that, that's very true yeah i i even so, told my parents that if if ever it comes down to a lockdown they shouldn't go out they shouldn't be the ones oh, going out to buy food you know yeah you, you a lot of my friends um you, you've probably seen those memes like uh um, your parents telling you to stay home, and but at this time you're telling your parents to stay home. Oh, <laughs> so, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. because like there's, like there's like yeah, they're the most vulnerable at the moment. But of course, them yeah. being parents, they wouldn't want us to go out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, and they they complain a lot. Not not my parents, but okay. like my friends' parents complain about staying in a lot, and yeah. so they're always like, "Do you have to go out?" But, <laughs> no. I don't know. Maybe we are more resilient to that because we have the internet and everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh, but then you do see like grandparents more like being more active on social media, which is very interesting. Wow. Or starting social media. That's nice. It's just funny. It's so funny. It's very funny. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So anyway, Alex, thanks a lot for your time. Okay. Um, no worries. Wishing you all the best in your health and uh, yeah, I'll catch you soon. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. Alright, um, so yeah, in the Philippines, uh, it's definitely a lot uh, different than Singapore. The, um, the uh, I would say they have a large population, um, also a bit of a third world country um, with uh, poverty still a big problem there. So I would say um, it's, it's definitely a tough situation for the government, um, but I think uh, they'll have a handle on it sooner or later. Um, I don't pretend to know politics or anything to do with the government or how to handle a pandemic. All right, so next up we have Fern. Um, she's from Thailand. Um, so let's just hear what she has to say. Hi. Hi, Sean. <laughs> how have you been? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. I saw you were sick on Instagram. Yeah. Um. So, like in Singapore, like even if you're a bit sick, mm. as long as it's something close to the virus, they'll give you a five days 
um, medical leave and you cannot leave your house. It's like by law, you cannot leave your house. Oh. Yeah. That's uh, good. But I, I think uh, Do you it's like- all right. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit bored right now, but um, I'm doing some work from the office, like just mm-hmm. um, like doing uh, computer stuff. So um, it's all right so far. I've had friends who are like still in quarantine for like 14 days, so oh. I've got nothing to complain about. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, how's, how are you? I, um, are you guys staying at home? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're staying at home. Um, I've been home for like five days or so. Uh, I only leave home like once or twice a week to like in case I have a meeting or yeah, in okay. case I need some supplies. But most so of so the time, it's not it's not a lockdown yet. No, right? it's not. It's not like but okay. most of the things are closed here in in Bangkok, mm-hmm. um, except for you know groceries and supermarkets. The the essential stuff. The essential stuff, because yeah. even though you go out, you can't do much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no point. <laughs> yeah. Um, for us, it's almost the same. Most of the entertainment stuff is closed. Mm. Um. But uh, offices, they are beginning to close, like the work, you know, normal working people, they are beginning to work from home. Mm. Um, and grocery stores are, of course, still open. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, just like, so So you guys are just advised to stay at home. Yeah, yeah, work. yeah. Just advice okay. at the moment. Um, I don't know if you have seen the pictures on the news, but like you will see Bangkok in a different Way. Like empty yeah, streets kind of thing. <laughs> like, you know how normally you are here and it's like traffic everywhere. Yes, it, yes. Especially in Chinatown. Like last night I was seeing the somebody was playing like badminton on the, on the road because that's <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. The, these are like once in a lifetime photos that you'll yeah, never yeah, get yeah. again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, so, so I mean, things are relatively all right there i guess if you 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 guys are still going about because i i just got off the the phone with a friend in the philippines Mm -hmm. and uh i think on their on their side they've they've locked down the whole city so it's only you know you have to get a pass to go in and out of your home kind of thing Mm. Uh, yeah uh, but yeah i'm glad that you guys aren't at that stage yet so yet yeah uh, that's good yeah i mean i mean uh, even singapore like we handled it pretty well but i think there will be a time where we will have to you know, mm-hmm. do the next step. Mm-mm. Yeah, just just to be safe. Yeah, for um, for for Bangkok and Thailand, um, I think right now we are just at the start. So recently, we have, on average, we have about one hundred to one hundred and forty cases per day. Mm-hmm. So this morning I checked, we are at one thousand and seven hundred something. Mm. Yeah, so I think at one point it's gonna start going up really high because I have seen like some of the predictions and they were saying if I'm not wrong uh, we can expect at least uh, 17,000 people um, mm. being affected by the vi- virus um, for minimum but yeah that sounds scary but I don't know um, <laughs> and and also like right now um, mm-hmm. the cases are spread throughout most part of Thailand already. First, okay. we only had like in Bangkok and like the major ones are the southern the part. The main cities, yeah. Uh, because uh, there are people traveling from Malaysia. But oh, okay. at the moment, like it's just all over the place. And, <laughs> and I don't know, like it's going to get worse. So I'm yeah, trying we, to we... be mentally prepared and like try my best to, you know, not <laughs> leave my house. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, how how is your family and everyone there? Are you guys all at home? Um, so I'm here in Bangkok with my two brothers and my aunt. My yeah. parents are in Lampang, which is uh, okay. the northern part of Thailand. Um, where, uh, in in Lampang, we we only have like one case in Lampang or something. Okay. But my parents are super panicked, like way more panicked <laughs> than us. So <laughs> she would be calling my aunt like, oh, you have to go and get the eggs. It's going to run out. And, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then my auntie would go like, oh, eggs, eggs, eggs. <laughs> and now I've been eating eggs like for the past two weeks. Just, oh, my you gosh. know. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I get what you mean. Yeah. And then, uh, and then my, my parents are starting to like um, grow their own food. 
so they're oh, doing really? like onion. Wow, self-sustaining. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think it's it's a good thing because usually my mom, she's very like active. She would go out and hang out with her friends. Yeah. And now she only has to like try her best to stay home. So it's yep. good for her to you know find something to do at least, you know, grow yeah. some plants and like do some dancing at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just saying like uh, it, it's it's you know this whole stay home thing and isolation. Like our generation, we are okay with that. You know, we yeah. are more calm with that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think the older generation, they like the to walk around the breeze and the air and all that. So it might be a bit difficult for the older guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, so, so like personally, how is this whole thing affecting you? Like, you know, life and job and all that. Oh, <laughs> you know, like um, because last year I was doing my master degree. Yeah. So I had like plans for this year. Um. I was thinking, because I, I did my graduation in, in January mm -hmm. this year, I was thinking, okay, in March, I'm going to move to Singapore, yep. find a job, because my boyfriend lives there. And then it didn't happen, obviously. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That, that sounds like, oh, that's huge plans. Like, that's life-changing plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can sort of, like, see all your dream, like, crash down <laughs> oh no <laughs> and yeah. i don't know when this is gonna like end it's probably gonna yeah. be another while and mm. it's super hard to find jobs yeah. um so i'm struggling with that as well because okay um first of all like being a foreigner trying to apply for a job in another country is already hard i feel hard enough yeah yeah and now it's like the the economy impact is gonna you know affect everybody so mm. the the hiring late i'm not right i'm not so sure about that like because i've been like trying to applying for jobs yeah as best as i can but still no luck <laughs> yeah so i don't know if I it's mean... because of the virus or is it just me <laughs> no i think it's 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 the it's mostly the virus because i have friends who've you know, tried to apply for jobs. Uh, like they are Singaporeans and they're trying to apply for jobs in different companies, but the companies just can't be sure that they can support them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, now maybe they can take you on, but we don't know how this virus will affect and they can't promise you yeah. a long-lasting job, you yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah. most of them are, are rather hesitant to take on new people. And like you say, being a foreigner, it makes it even more difficult. Yeah. So, so I don't know, like... Uh, it yeah. is tough <laughs> yeah oh my gosh and I thought my plans were ruined I was just thinking of like going for holidays and stuff <laughs> like that I was like oh no all my travel plans are gone but I keep forgetting that there are other people out there with bigger problems than me you know yeah Yeah. well but, but um, yeah. if you look on the bright side um, because last year I, I went on like in the full nerdy study mode like I was yep. doing my master's degree so I didn't go out at all I was like staying only in my study study room or in the library mm -hmm. and now that I have time for myself I can finally like you know catch up on stuff like books yep. that I haven't read movies that I haven't watched I'm thinking like, like now I'm starting to learn some investment because like my financial knowledge is so okay, bad. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I have time now. Okay, I'm gonna try that. I was thinking maybe I should learn some Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, like while well, applying okay, for okay. jobs as well. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. Yeah, it's definitely a once in a lifetime. Um, I I I don't know if I can use the word opportunity because people are suffering. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it is a once in a lifetime moment where we can. On the bright side, we can take a break and do mm. things that we could never do um, yeah. it, while we are busy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like for me as well, like I, I take this time where it slows down a bit to catch up on a lot of things that I've been putting off. Um, so yeah, at least you're keeping yourself busy. Mm. Uh, there's something to do. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys are doing all right. Yeah, trying our best to stay healthy. Like I take vitamins <laughs> and... Um, but I, I do get like paranoid sometimes. I, mm, of course. I, I 
I would be like, oh, this morning I wake up with a sore throat. Is this it? Like, <laughs> you know? I know, I know what you mean. I've been coughing for the past few months, so I don't know when I should be afraid, but yeah, I've been coughing for the past few months. So everybody around me is afraid of me, but I'm just like, dude, this happened. My cough began before the outbreak. Like, it's something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think I think yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I just wish you all the best, and thank I you. I hope to catch up with you again. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. I miss Thailand it's so nice much. To either, see you. Yeah, either you come here or we go there. We'll just <laughs> wait for this whole thing to finish off. Yeah. All right. Thanks Aww, so much, friend. You too. Thank you. Right, Stay healthy. Take care. Take care. Uh, yeah, so um, like she said, in a, on a personal note, this has affected a lot of her plans for the future relationships. If you're doing long distance, it's definitely affecting, uh, affected. Um, but like like I said, um, you know, there are bigger problems out there. People are dying of hunger, uh, going out of jobs. So uh, we all have our problems. But uh, yeah, it's good to hear um, neighboring countries and how they're doing. So hopefully I can see her again one day uh, when all this is over. All right, so I have a special guest. Um, she she's she's in Singapore, but she's just returned from the UK. So um, any Singapore citizens that has been um, that's been you know advised to come back home, um, they are being quarantined for fourteen days, and the government has very kindly booked out hotels for them to. Um, uh, do their fourteen days quarantine in, so she's uh um. She is, so she's uh, staying at one of the resorts in Sentosa, which is a sort of a playground island um, off the shores of Singapore, but still still part of Singapore. Um, and she's doing her 14 days there. So uh, I just want, that's a, I mean, that's a very unique um, position that I think um, I don't, or, or few people get the chance to experience. So I thought it'd be interesting to share with you guys uh, what she's doing over there. Hi Nadia. Hey Sean, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Quite, looks looks comfortable, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Looks uh, very comfortable. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, yeah. um, yeah. Thanks for doing this. Um, yeah, I know it's a bit out of the blue, but uh, cause cause like I think you're in a very unique position right <laughs> now. Like, I don't know anyone else who who is this, but you you just came back from the UK, correct? Yeah, I just came back. So, like, they straight away brought you to the hotels. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, like, like, how does it... Like, everybody... Was, was it a chartered flight from, from um, the UK back to Singapore? No, it's not. Um, but the thing is, I booked the flight before the government said that they were, like, they have subsidised flights. So, I booked it one day before. So, on, oh. and they said that they have subsidised flights the day after and I realised oh actually I could have gotten it cheaper <laughs> so I paid like I think it's 100 pounds cheaper if you get the subsidised flights oh okay okay but they still manage you guys the same way once you reach the airport lah. yeah yeah everyone will arrive I think after the 25th midnight if I'm not wrong okay yeah, yeah. and and like how long do you have to be there 14 days 14 days yeah but the day you only start the day after you arrive so yeah, it has yeah. to be one full day okay so it's and like so, yeah 14 nights yeah sorry 14 nights more like 14, 14 nights. Yeah, right. Really okay. Yeah. So, like, um, are, are any, is anyone allowed to visit you? No. I can't even, like, because I have a friend here who's in the same hotel. Uh -huh. But I cannot even see her. I cannot go out of the room. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, we all <laughs> okay. have a balcony. That's the most we can go out. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you can wait from one balcony to another, but you yeah, can't but go out of your room. That's the thing. It depends if there's anyone else in the balcony. Because my friend oh, yeah. is on the 11th floor. Oh, okay, okay. I, I I thought she was just next to you. No, no, we can't choose the rooms. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then what about food? Like, they're bringing you catered, like, uh, catered food lah. I think the food is from the restaurant itself, like, the hotel restaurant. Because okay. I, um, I've been talking to, like, my other friends from other hotels. And they mm -hmm. said that their food is different from ours. So, okay, it looks, okay. like, depends on the hotel that you're at. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That's nice. But... Other than that, like, how was the procedure, like, from the airport here? Was it, like, very quick or was it, like, there was a lot of delay? Because um, I've been watching videos of, like, how China processes their foreigners coming in yeah. or even their residents coming back. Yeah. It takes, like, almost 6 to 12 hours to process them into a, a quarantine area. I think it depends which period in time that you came back. Because when I came back, I wasn't the first batch who came back from overseas. 
So mm-hmm. I think the first batch they swap most people. But when okay. I when I came back, not we weren't swapped at all. Which I think they should because like I mean most of us were students and we don't even know if we have the you know the virus and we won't okay, even show okay. symptoms. We might be a carrier. Yeah. The thing is, we all like it depends when you come in and to be honest, I feel it's better for us to get swapped because you know when else will you get swapped? And you that's also, true. Yeah, you might as well get tested right there. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they, they do have like when you arrive at the airport like at the gate to enter Singapore there is a section there's an area where you can test like where they test people but I think they only test those who are showing symptoms already like you know like fever or shortness of breath or that kind of stuff okay yeah but like coming back with all these people what like what's the feeling <laughs> actually right I thought that it I mean the airport would be the most dangerous place right but from what I hear, it's like the airplane is actually the safest because they have hospital-grade altimeters. So okay. basically, I think the like it's the higher is higher percentage that you can catch the virus in the airport rather than the plane. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because like but... people, most of them wear masks. Most, most, most. Okay. Huh? Really? Yeah. Like there was this guy. <laughs> That's very me. surprising. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I thought everyone would be like fair enough, but there's this guy beside me. I asked him like, why not wearing a mask? Then he said, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know. It, I mean, obviously, the WHO advised not to wear a mask, but there's a reason mm. why. But I just feel like, you know, you have to take the risk, especially when yeah, you're yeah. traveling. So, it's just an extra layer, just yeah. in case. But I think that's yeah. very, um, like, a lot of Western countries actually have that kind of mindset, you know, mm. don't wear masks, but only in Asian countries usually. Yeah, I think in Asian countries, we are more used to wearing the mask. And, you know, uh, <laughs> like, yeah. one of my friends, uh, a few of my friends were going back home um, to KL, Okay. And then opposite their flight was the flight to Shanghai. And most of them were, were like in hazmat suits. Oh my gosh. It's like you could see the distinct between like people <laughs> who are going back to Malaysia and people going back to Shanghai. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it was quite interesting to see that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. So how many days do you have left in the, the, the quarantine? Today's my day five. So I have 10. Is it day five only? Wait, is it day five? Shit, I, I felt like you've been there five. forever. I lost track of time already. <laughs> today is Wednesday. I've been here since Friday, but the day one is Saturday. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, day five. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So after this, um, when you return home, is it like you still have to stay home or is it like you're free? You are technically free, but I rather keep it safe. Like I rather quarantine myself for another like two weeks. Mm. Because I mean the symptoms If I actually have it The symptoms won't show Like some people can have it Till like 24 days like. Yep yep so, it's, a, it's a very long thing Yeah that's why We don't even know And because I was a swap So even I want to make sure That I'm safe Before I like, meet my grandparents Or like my relatives or Yeah yeah Of course Yeah, yeah. Okay Yeah great great I um, hope that's a good insight Yeah yeah That's <laughs> very good insight Like I, I hope everything's Comfortable there um, I think Singapore government Takes care of us Pretty well Right. You know, you know, I, I'm like low key, like feel bad, like I go. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> like, you're so getting bad. rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite. Alright, but um, yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot for mm-hmm. for for calling um uh, for for letting me talk to you for this. No problem. Uh, hopefully we get to catch up once all this is <laughs> over. Uh, yeah. myself, I'm five days MC because I have some like cough and. Uh, a bit of a fever so they rather don't yeah, care five, five days <laughs> MC is a yeah. law right now in Singapore so is it? Five yeah days. yeah okay. so so anyone with any symptomatic kind of um, illness yeah. will five days MC straight away and yeah. by law you're not allowed to leave the house okay yeah so um, I don't know it's only day two and I'm going a bit crazy but <laughs> I was going crazy on day one I was like how am I supposed to do this and I'm I'm the kind who like I feed off energy people's energy <laughs> Yeah. So like, oh my god, oh, I don't no. see anyone. Yeah. I don't even see like animals. I only saw a peacock that's why I'm also. Oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait, so you're so you're in Sentosa, right? Yeah, do you want to have a look at the it's a bit Yeah yeah, that would be right now. That'll be great. Um, I already have some things out, but like yeah, I can just show you around. So uh so we have the balcony which is there. Um and because I don't have the privilege of getting the other view, so my view is like the forest. <laughs> um, if you got the other side, I think you've seen videos. Yeah, is, uh, is it the beach view? Yeah, the beach view. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. but here it's not like nothing much. So um, so just like places. Don't, don't mind my sloth. 
luggage. So depends on your room. Some people have like king size rooms, some uh, car king size bed, some have twin. And okay. Then okay. We usually get oh, I can um a bin to just put our stuff. Mm. Than just the toilet stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we so, have a bathtub somewhere, so it's like. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so like, how do they give you food? Do they leave it outside, so, like, or is there you. someone that passes yeah, it to uh, you? Okay, let me show you. I'll just set go very quick. So it's like that. Oh, okay, okay. So everyone will oh. have their own table. Okay. Yeah. So and then people just like leave the food and stuff. Oh, so okay, as okay. you can see, I usually collect my <laughs> my containers until I finish, and then yeah, yeah, and then they usually like give you like. Today was like they give you kuih, and like I think you see um, the updates on my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I've seen all the food. It looks yeah, better than what I'm having. Color snacks. <laughs> yeah. So wow. Um, my parents came once already, so they already dropped off some stuff for me. But a lot of people, no one actually dropped anything for them. Okay. Okay. So like when they drop off, you don't meet actually meet them, lah. No. They, oh, they... Okay. Let, let me just show you because I can see the entrance from my room. So I actually waved to my mom when she came. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so there's a balcony. Then there's like an entrance there. Uh huh. The entrance there. So there's a yep. security there. So anyone who comes with stuff, so they drop it off. Okay. And then the staff will bring this, all the, the things up, and then only when, only then the the items. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's nice. So, so they can still get to use some essential stuff, your, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They your, your laptop and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that's, that's a uh, talk. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for yeah. letting me talk <laughs> to you. Um, <laughs> wishing you all the best in health and hopefully all this gets you over too, soon. since you're in kind of isolation <laughs> also. A bit, a bit. But yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. I know, Maurice. All Take right, care thanks. of Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Alright, so I um, hope you guys enjoyed that um, that conversation with uh, Nadia and uh, having a look around the hotel. I think it's pretty nice accommodation. So hopefully they all feel welcome back. Um, it's definitely a lot of inconvenience when you are suddenly pulled away from your life to come back home. But I think it's better to be home with your family than, you know, stuck somewhere else. Um, in times like these, I can understand why the government wants all their citizens back under one roof. It's like being a mother, if there's something happening outside, you want all your kids to come back home so you can keep an eye on them. Um, I think every country is struggling with this at the moment and mm, to have your own citizens back on back on your own soil, uh, I think it makes it a lot easier to manage, um, especially with healthcare, citizenship and all that other uh, other stuff. All right, so next up is my friend Ricky. Uh, he's from Ireland. And yeah, um, he's one of the further countries away from us uh, in the United Kingdom site. Um, yeah, so let's just hear what he has to say about the situation over there. Hello? Yo, yo, yo. Yo. Um, so how thing, how are things over there? Like, any is it any lockdown or anything like that? Or just like um, people staying at home? We only got this. It's not even like a a real super hardcore lockdown at the minute. It's more like a more laid back lockdown. But yep. Something's better and often, you know. But uh, probably like a couple, a week or two before the, lo- the actual government lockdown, people weren't really taking it that serious. Yeah. You know, you see people like treating it as a holiday, you know, time off work, and like uh, <laughs> going to the beach, having barbecues and all that stuff. And then you see like a lot of you know, like family of like five or four walking down the street, going cycling and like just doing a lot of oh like gosh. activities together. Yeah. People weren't taking it serious. Now it's good to see people taking it more serious. Ah, cool, cool. But um, so so like, uh, how are you guys? Are you guys just staying at home, like yourself, just you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm just staying at home at the minute and just you know catching up on a lot of like work. It's easy for me because I'm a content creator, so working at home and catching up work is easy. Yeah, so just a lot of editing at home. <laughs> yeah, but I do feel bad for the people who can't actually work themselves. Mm. You know, no cash flow and yeah. like looking after kids and family and all that stuff. It's sad. Yeah, yeah, it's tough out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, glad you're doing all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I because I was talking to a couple of friends before, um, like in the Philippines and in Thailand, there's like 
pretty major restrictions to the point where like only one person can leave the house to buy food at a time. Yeah. yeah. But it's nothing like that over there, right? Um, you? Over here, they're saying leave the house if necessary. Um, that's yeah. like, you know, going to grocery, sh- grocery shopping, buying food and other essentials and just yeah, anything that's important. But other than that, just stay at home. Mm. They've made the keyword stay at home like super powerful at the minute. You know, you hear it everywhere. Yeah. Even in like TVs and all, like... Every time after, between TV shows and after, there's always the government and the NHS saying stay at home. All right, all right. Yeah, it's pretty much the same over here. Um, mostly advisories and nothing, nothing that's really enfor- like forcing us to stay home, but we're just encouraged to at the moment. So yeah. I think, yeah, we're, we're pretty much on the same level in that sense. Yeah, I think people in the UK and Europe should wear masks more. Like, Mm. at the beginning, people over here would see people wearing a mask and automatically think, oh my God, they're infected. But in fact, nah, we don't want to get infected, (laughs) though. But now, you see a couple of more people wear masks, and I think it does make people feel a lot better now. But mm. saying that, two weeks ago, there would be people judging you, judging you for wearing masks. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of controversy as to like, you know, whether you should wear a mask or whether you should just, you know, not go out at all. Yeah, but here, here it's the same. Maybe about a quarter of the people are wearing masks, but our, our government just advise us like, you know, if only if you're sick, then you wear the mask. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's it's. You know, it's just for uh, the protection of others more than yourself. So you don't sneeze onto people and stuff like that. But also so that you don't touch your face. Mm. Yeah. There's just a lot uh, of fake news going about it too. People are just believing everything they hear from the internet. Hmm. You know, I think that's another thing that should be addressed. Yeah, there's there's way too much shit going on in the internet now. (laughs) Everybody's got their own opinions. I mean, even the doctors, like, some of them can't agree on the same thing. So it's, yeah. Yeah, like whenever I was in Dubai there, like two weeks ago, like they were just about taking like the whole corona thing really serious. Like you go to the gym, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer and like, you know, putting the the temperature gun in your forehead to see like yep. the temperature. And uh, they do have this law, like if you're caught spreading rumors about the virus, you will have jail time and all that stuff. So. I think they should do it over here too, just to cut off all the fake news. Yeah, yeah. Wait, where did you say you were? Dubai? Dubai. Did you say you were in Dubai? Dubai, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I think I think their government's a lot more strict over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, like, you know, like, in times like these, like, you know, like, you, you look at America and, like, uh, the US, like, all their politics are... Uh, it's it's just like a mess and like nobody can get anything done because they're busy <laughs> arguing over themselves. Busy? Like, but then it's like in China, they just have one guy that just says, all right, do this, do this, and everybody just follows it. Yep. I mean, in a way that communism is a bit good in this sense, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's so true. It's very, very true. I heard something uh, that the Donald Trump's now putting the blame to uh, the doctors and all now. In America, now that the thing has gone out of proportion. Yeah. So. He's kind of blaming everyone, though. He he even blamed Obama for not setting up the healthcare system, right? Um, yeah, he, he's basically blaming everyone. Um, but yeah, uh, that's that's more that's the US's problem. Um, oh man, their numbers are soaring right now. It's insane. Uh, dude, they've I think they've doubled China's. I think that one hundred sixty thousand at the moment. How scary is it in Singapore? Um, the thing is that um in Singapore we I think we are a bit more prepared for this because of SARS, um like SARS really hit us hard, um about seventeen years ago. So we have all the measures in place, and the government was, uh, pretty quick to act. Um, when 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 there was just a few numbers. When I remember when there was about forty. Uh, the government already put out a lot of restrictions and and really did all that contact tracing kind of thing. Who who met up with who? And I also think because okay, in a way, um, it's a bit 
uh, how do you say it? the 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 government has quite a bit of control over the people. In in a way, it's kind of good because that way you can find out who you can find out information a lot quicker. But I think in like the US, they are very, um, very, very protective of their personal data, their their freedom of speech and all that kind of things. But here in Singapore, I think the government has a lot of uh, control over this, and it really helps during this kind of situation. So, for example, we have this app on our phone that allows the government to know who has been near each other. So it uses like a Bluetooth signal to to find out who has been near each other, and so oh, well, just in case smart. somebody, yeah. So just in case somebody gets it, um, they they go into this data which is encrypted and just trace whoever needs to be traced and contacts them via that app to stay home and stay put and not get into contact with anyone else. Yeah. So you know, in in a in like in the US, this kind of thing wouldn't work because they are very protective of their privacy, but. I think here we are a bit more trusting of our government and we've seen what our government can do um, to stop this. So we all want to cooperate with them and, you know, do our part for that. So I think in Singapore, we are we do panic at times when our neighbours around us start to close their borders. But for the most of it, we are pretty all right. School is still open. Um, work is slowing down. People are starting to work from home. Yes. Uh, bars and nightclubs are all closed. Uh, but yeah, we are... We are a very small city, so we have to be a lot more careful because once it breaks out, it's it's even harder to control. Exactly. Um, but, yeah. But, I, I mean, looking at the other countries, I think we are pretty all right. Um, we, are, we, we don't have to panic too much for that, yeah. Yeah, well, looking at the graph, like, I think Hong Kong, Singapore, um, Singapore, like Malaysia and all are all keeping it really, really, you know, well. It's just yeah. the rest of Europe, like you know, it's just crazy. It's it's really scary when it hits Europe, like the whole Spanish flu thing. It just spreads so quickly. Mm. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe because people move around a lot more, um, from one city to another. Um, but yeah, it's pretty scary once it hits the hits the UK. Yeah, but I think. Uh, I mean, not the UK. Uh, U- Europe. Sorry. Because yeah. if you go on to, do you ever go on the, you know, the flight scanner thing on the website? It shows you all the live movements of all the airplanes going around the world. Oh, oh, there's a website for that. Yeah. Go What's it called? Flight radar. Just type out flight radar, and like go to UK. There's probably like, probably like ten flights max a day. All right. So are are these planes on on route? Yeah, all these planes are. You can click on the airplanes, and it tells you where they're going. Oh my gosh. Oh shit. Why are there so many in America? Exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh wow. Okay. That <laughs> uh I I don't know what's going on, but yeah. Maybe they've shut you know, they shut international flights but not the domestic flights. So it's all like clustered in the United States. Well I think UK should just have a lockdown for a good two weeks. I think every mm. country should have a lockdown for a good two weeks. You know. Yeah, just to just to kill it off, let let it starve out. Yeah, yeah I, I I totally agree with that, man. I I thought of that a few weeks ago. Honestly, like even a month ago, I was said, you know, just just take a hard hit for fourteen days, and we can like just just squeeze all all of the viruses out. Yeah. Yeah, but. Um, I guess they didn't want panic and stuff like that, so it was only a last resort. But it's scary. It's really, really scary. <laughs> it is. It is so scary. Just want to get back to my normal life again. Yeah, like, like I mean, who knew we would live through a pandemic? You know, know like, right. like you know, it's a once in a lifetime kind of thing. And bro, yeah. I could think like four years ago, I was beside you, flying a drone in St Kilda, Melbourne. Why? Global crisis, FaceTiming each other. I know, <laughs> it's it's a it's a bit weird. Like I've been reconnecting with a lot of friends as well from overseas, and it's only when when it's crisis then we start to, you know, do these kind of things because we have a bit more time now. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's crazy. It puts people from their busy lives and just do all the stuff that you have. I oh, know. Alright, Ricky. So um, anyway, thanks a lot for um your time. Um, hope you guys are well over there in Ireland. 
Um, and hopefully, <laughs> when all this is done, I can come visit. Oh my no, gosh. Dude, you, have to come, you have to come to Northern Ireland and come see Game I know, man. and all that stuff. It's so, it's been so long. All right, man. All right, take care, man. Peace. All right, so that was Ricky. Uh, a big thanks to him for giving me the time. I think I stayed up until 2 a.m. that night just to to call in to him, you know, a bit of different time zone, but that's fine. Uh, we are all stuck at home anyway. All right, so next up is my friend uh, Hector. He is one of my good friends. He lives in Hong Kong at the moment with his family. Um, Hong Kong is very much like Singapore. We are a very dense city um, in Asia, uh, sort of the financial capital of uh, Asia. So um, we have a very similar background because we both experience, uh, our, our, both, both our countries experience uh, the SARS outbreak about 17 years ago. So um, we are slightly more prepared for this. Um, and I think our people also are more understanding as to what to do in the case of a pandemic like this. So let's just talk to Hector. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Hello. Hi, Hector. Hi. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm good. Uh, good. Working from home? Yeah, just to just today. Oh, so like, so like, has like Hong Kong like um, put out? Any notices for like, as in is it compulsory to work from home or you guys you guys just getting started with it? Uh, we started a few weeks ago. Okay, but it's not compulsory. It's just an advice. No, it's com for my company. Yes, it is. But in terms of government policy, it's not. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think so like you to go on the working from home arrangement. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Sing- I think Singapore, it's like they're trying to enforce it because not a lot of companies are doing it. I mean, majority of the companies are doing it, but there's still like, I think 30% that is still not doing it. But the government is pretty strict on that. Now, they say anyone who's not like in the manufacturing or, you know, like anything to do with your hands, labor, yeah, you should be working from home. Yeah. Um, but I mean, how's, how's everything in Hong Kong? Like, is there any lockdown? Like, you can still go out or what? People still go out, you know, like, and they. I think they kind of let their guards down. Oh shit! <laughs> That's not why I want to hear. That's not very good at all. Yeah, but because um, no, last month I think mm-hmm. the numbers are quite not so serious. Yeah, yeah. So there are only two or three confirmed cases per week. Yeah, but then when. All the all the students from UK and US started coming back to Hong Kong. Then yeah. that, the yeah, 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 it's the same for us as well. Um, crazy. Like like when 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 we start recalling people back to come back home, then like yeah, the cases start to rise. But it's all imported cases, so it's not like community spread. So that's that's all right. Yeah. But I think like you know like Hong Kong and Taiwan like is handling it damn well. Uh, mm. I think. Curse of our, I think, I mean, you compare to the Euro- the other countries like the US and Europe, uh, it's because of SARS. Like, last time SARS, we were like, <laughs> we're like, we got screwed up by SARS so much that we were like, no, we can't, we can't do this again. So, like, I think we are like damn prepared for this. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm in Hong Kong. It's very different. I don't know why, you know, there are still foreigners in Hong Kong. They still do, don't really have the... How to say they don't really wear mask mm. when they go out. Yeah, I think it's a cultural thing as well. I think so. Yeah, like yeah, like Asians, it's like quite normal to wear. Like I mean, I mean, when I go to China or Hong Kong, like people people wear masks, but like you know, in in other countries, I've never seen anyone wear a mask before. No, I just feel like they have this this ideas in their head that. When others wear face masks, then you don't have to because you are more protected than. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so but, so like oh, other people are wearing, so I don't have to. So yeah. I can save money. Uh, yeah, exactly. But like, how 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 like is is the mask in back in stock in Hong Kong? Like, is it easier to buy masks? It should yeah. be right. The, like the first few weeks, everyone was like panicking, same as Singapore, and like yeah. I didn't see any masks on sale. Uh, but now yeah. it's slowly coming back. I think. But how much how much are uh, masks these days? Like a box of fifty. Huh. Do you have any I idea? I think it's around two hundred. Two hundred Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. 
Let me convert that. Two hundred Hong Kong dollars. Oh, that's about thirty-seven Singapore dollars. There, yeah, it's about the same. Um, same right? In Singapore, it's about thirty-nine dollars. So yeah, it's it's pretty much the same. But I think in Australia, it's almost sixty dollars for fifty <laughs> pieces. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Like yeah, they they there there are quite a few companies um starting to build their own. You know, like my sister, mm-hmm. she works in Indra, and then they their their company has started a department just to make, just to um. Manufacture face masks. Oh, okay, okay. For their company. Oh, that's nice. I mean, I but heard you know Razer, Razer the mouse, the mouse brand Razer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're they're also starting to like make masks as well. <laughs> yeah. Favorite. Yeah. I, I saw I saw a meme the other day. It was like razor mask, then like there's like LED lights around. Oh, <laughs> the <yeah>. RGB lights. <laughs> That's a bra again. <laughs> oh yeah, better than the, the bra mask. Um but yeah, I mean so so you guys aren't in any lockdown or any quarantine kind of thing, right? No. Okay, okay, that's good. I mean same I for us. Too. Yeah, we can still go out. Um I, I can't. Matthew and I can't because we are sick. Uh, on five days MC, uh, so we uh, can't even leave the house. But everyone else is still free to go out. It's just very discouraged. Is there any hoarding in in Singapore? Oh, hoarding! Actually, Singapore only Singaporeans only start hoarding when our neighbors around us start to close their borders because, um, Singapore. I think some similar to Hong Kong, like we depend on trade, like to bring things in. We yeah. don't have like farms and things like that for resources. So. Uh, when Malaysia shut its borders, there was a big panic because we didn't know whether food, rice and all this will come in. So mm. like Singaporeans started to go to like all the supermarkets and buying all the rice and things like that. Mm. Uh, but those usually last for maybe two days, but then it will, it will just calm down very dramatically. It will like suddenly after two days, you just go back to the shop, everything is fully stocked. I mean, we, we have enough... Um, uh, saved up in storage, you know, like the government has all these things stored up already for this type of emergencies. Uh, and also, we also have different trades, not just from Malaysia, but from Thailand, from Indonesia, all over the world, even the US and Germany kind of thing. So, you know, there, there is some panic, uh, but it isn't, how do you say, uh, it isn't all of Singapore, it's just a very small bunch. Mm. Um, but, um, okay, if you go to the supermarket, you should expect slightly longer queues the reason i think i i heard this from a friend and the reason is it might be because more people are eating at home like you mm. see now now everybody like us we are like working from home and then usually we we buy food from outside but now we need more groceries so that's the reason why there might be more people um queuing up out there uh yeah but what what about hong kong what's the situation like holding only exists about two days then it dies down mm. immediately because I think different from Singapore, Hong Kong has its own supplies. We have oh, our okay. food, we have our own, you know, dairy, and also vegetables. And so oh, we are quite, quite. That's good. Mm. Yeah, but but like when when China closed its borders, did, were you, eh, did did it ever close? No, it's still nope. <laughs> okay. Okay, I I won't get into that. I won't get into that. <laughs> uh, but uh, that. Their justification is that there are Hong Kong people living and working in Shenzhen or in China. So they have to commute every day. Yeah, I know. Singapore had that issue as well because we have Malaysians coming back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you guys doing that? Uh, Okay, so the situation was that when Malaysia closed its borders, it was a very last minute thing because uh, like, like at first they said they were going to close but then we didn't, they they didn't announce it until like 24 hours before. And like 24 hours before, some of the people already left uh, Malaysia and come into Singapore for their work day. So they didn't bring anything. So when at 12 noon, the government announced it, some of them had to leave work straight away to go back home and get stuff and come back. So uh, there were some people that it took six hours for them just to cross that border. Usually it's not supposed to be that long, but... Uh, okay, so the thing is that people had to decide, are you going to stay in Singapore or Malaysia? You have to mm. decide. You know, if you stay in Singapore, where are you going to stay? Uh, you'll definitely still be, you know, working because your job is here. So that's a, that's a plus point. But 
you don't have anywhere to stay if you are always commuting back and forth. Yeah. So um, so companies like construction, they had to make a decision because uh, they had to send back half of the Malaysians that were not very essential and half that was very essential and they need on the construction side. Yeah. But the uh, but I think Singapore government has tried their best to accommodate um, the Malaysians staying in Singapore, um, uh, putting them up in uh, some of the hotels and uh, rental places. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know for sure if we have housed everyone yet. There are some people that had to sleep on the streets for like one or two days. That's oh, that's really too too short notice for the government to handle. But uh, the government has been opening up like you know, sports halls and things like that to try and accommodate yeah. these yeah. Malaysians. And I think everyone in Singapore also tried to help out a bit. Like, there are yeah. some people who have empty apartments, then they like, oh, just let let uh, five or six uh, Malaysians stay in there for free oh, kind of so thing. Fine. Yeah, but it was, it's a very shocking turn of events because, you know, it's like our neighbour and we can empathise with them because sometimes we also go over there to like, to like eat and stuff like that. We know like, it's not easy to come back and forth. So I think Singapore... You know, even though we have some, sometimes we have like arguments with Malaysia, but we try to help them out as much as possible. Um, mm. Yeah, and hope next time they will do the same for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's very uh, different from our relationship with China. Mm. It's pretty much the same. And, but then we, there are not much for us to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like, they are, if they are, if they are good, I mean, so far, they, they have not locked out the border yet, but I guess you guys will face a similar situation if they do close the border one day. Um, yeah. The Chinese have to figure out where they want to live, uh, where, which side they want to be stuck on. Because now Malaysia, at first they say it's two weeks, but now it might be extended because their, their numbers are growing quite rapidly. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, I Like, you know, like Supa and Weiping, they can't even go back home to see their parents, that kind of thing. I mean, at least they have like um, they have uh, houses in Singapore, so that's a bit better. Okay. But yeah, all right. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for your time. <laughs> uh, hope everything's going well in Hong Kong. In. Yeah. All right. I'll catch you again. Okay. Thanks, Hector. Bye bye. Bye. All right. So um, thank you, Hector, again for giving us uh, your time to speak to us, but. Um, yeah, definitely a different situation in Hong Kong, handling it really well. Uh, if you look at their numbers, it's it's pretty good for a very dense city like that. For those of you who do not know Hong Kong, it's the densest city in the world. Um, it's, it's packed with so much people and an outbreak can be pretty serious there. So um, the government is taking it very seriously and they, and they should because they're so near China and it's so easy for it to just break out in the city. Um, but yeah, let's talk to our next guest, uh, Natalia. She is from Ecuador, which is in South America. Um, this is a third world country as well. Um, and from what I know, it's the second highest infected in South America. And yeah, being in a third world country is definitely a lot harder to handle these kind of situations. So uh, let's just hear what she has to say. Hi, Natty. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, yeah, I just wanted to call and like see how you guys are doing over there in uh, Ecuador. Yeah. Okay, well, situation is getting worse every day. Uh, Ecuador is the second country with the uh, most infected people. Uh, taking into account that Ecuador is a very small country and we have a lot of infected people. I think we have like 2,500 2, right now. So when you say second most infected city, it's in, in South in America? In South America, of course. Yeah, because yeah. first is okay. Brazil right now, and we're in the second place. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, is it, I, I mean, it's, I guess it's mostly concentrated in the city area? Yeah, it's, uh, right now it's concentrated in the second main city, which is Guayaquil. Um, that's yeah. the city with uh, like the 70% of people infected. The main city, which is Quito, uh, it's not that bad, actually. We have like 200 or 300 people. Because people here, it, yeah. it's taking into account every every um, rule that the government has um, implemented. So, like, 
nobody is okay. getting out and like we're really we're being very conscious conscious about this but not people from Guayaquil so that's uh, different yeah okay yeah. uh all right so um is uh, what's the situation in the city at the moment are you guys uh what, what what's the status like are you guys on lockdown or are you guys just partially staying at home no we're locked down everyone is locked down the only people who can go out is the ones who are working like in the hospitals and uh i think in the supermarkets as well but then we have a curfew uh from 2 until 2 p.m until 5 a.m so people wow 2 p.m uh, yeah so People wow. can work only half day, uh, like since 6 a.m. until uh, 1 p.m. because they have to go to their homes from 1 to 2 p.m. Yeah. So, like, how are you guys doing with, like, food and essential things? Um, like you say, the supermarkets are still open half the mm -hmm. day. So, how do you guys go about getting, like, food and essential supplies? Yeah, so, only one person of the family can go to buy and it depends on your last number of your ID so you cannot go out every single day but I think you can only you have like two days depending on your of, the, of this number uh, yeah. and a uh, supermarket only allow 10 persons uh, like 10 people inside and you have to wait until yeah. the rest go out and so you can imagine the, the line outside of the yeah of the supermarkets it's crazy oh my mm -hmm. gosh um uh, but but i i guess you guys you guys are still all right um you still have like food enough food yeah like we try to keep our food as much as we can we're not eating more than what we should um mm -hmm. and i mean that's that's the situation of families like me who still have an amount of money to buy food i can't imagine what is going on with poor families which uh yeah. which earn money daily and that money it's uh it's coming from it's just zero now yeah right now it's yeah. zero absolutely so I, I i don't know what what's their situation right now like maybe they don't have food yeah hopefully the government is helping them out somehow if not um yeah i don't know what's gonna happen um yeah definitely it's a lot more difficult for the poorer uh the people with less money of course in in any country uh it's it's always more difficult um yeah, yeah I, I spoke to some friends uh in in um third world countries as well and of course the people who are homeless and in slums they are the ones that are uh, most affected by this yeah absolutely yeah. So um yeah, it's great to hear from you. Glad, glad uh that you guys are doing all right. Um okay, so for like kids and schools like that, um how how are they doing that? I mean, everyone is closed. Are they doing like some online thing or is there something that they can do? How how are lessons being conducted in that case? Well, in school um university cases, everyone is still working like online. Everyone uh, yep. I I know that all of them are still receiving class in a normal way. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's very good. That's, okay. That's um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. And in terms of, like, like has how has has the, do you want to talk about anything about the government or like you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Of course, um, everyone knows that Latin America is a third world, con uh, a third world continent. So things are yeah. very complicated here, and governments obviously are not prepared for something like this. I mean, if Europe is yeah. struggling a lot, so can, you can imagine how it's going on in Latin America. Everyone is breaking, uh. is breaking down. Governments really don't know what to do or how to handle things. How to handle people because people is getting crazy as well and everyone wants yeah. attention yeah um yeah i can i i can't imagine how that 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 would be like um i've spoken to um there, there was a friend yeah. i spoke 
uh, speaking to Depeter, in right? the Philippines and um it's it's something like what what you have explained um it's this is this is not the time for politics or anything like that but unfortunately um this is what happens when when a crisis hits and when the government isn't ready to accept it and do something about it so like you see the US they are all fighting amongst themselves and arguing um and and a lot of things aren't getting done um but yeah anyway um I'm glad you guys are still all right. Um, hopefully, uh, it gets under control. I think the lockdown is a good thing. It sort of, um, you know, squeezes the virus out of the system, um, and I think that's that's the most that everyone can do at the moment. But uh, how how are you guys on in terms of, um, healthcare supplies, for example, like um, masks and hand sanitizers, you know, um, uh, things to keep yourself hygienic. Mm, yeah, of course, there is. Uh, there are problems mm, related to that. We we are not having a mo- the the necessary amount. Not even hospitals are having this this product. So like people who are staying at their homes, they don't have either. If like only the the amount they they bought like three weeks ago. But yeah. yeah, and I only know that some uh, universities, some students, specific students are are um, generating more uh, hands out. Of- so can you repeat that last part yeah. about the university students? I think the the video got cut out. Sorry, I miss the the, the the connection is very bad right now. I think we're just having a bad connection, so we're just gonna try and cut this conversation a bit short. Um, I think the last thing she said was that the university students are finding a way to generate more hand sanitizers and doing it themselves. So, uh, definitely medical supplies are in shortage, um, because nobody expected this to happen. And of course, hand sanitizers. I'm not sure if hand sanitizers expire, but of course, the mask all um expires. So I've even got some kept from the SARS outbreak. And those are all expired already. So, um, yeah, definitely a difficult situation for uh, third world countries. Um, the the those who have money are probably doing all right. Uh, but those without money, um, this is a is a life changing, life threatening thing for them. So definitely, um, a lot of us, of course, we're trying to empathize with them, but. Um, in our position, it, uh, we, we might never know how these people are feeling because, you know, we are blessed with, um, um, you know, the opportunities to, to earn money and, and live in a good home. Uh, but definitely our prayers go out to the less fortunate. Um, so I think that ends it for our um, series of video calls um, and we'll get back to the conversation. All right, so uh, that was Natty. Um, I got cut off a bit, but... Um, like you said, everyone's doing their part. University students um, are trying their best to come up with uh, formulas for hand sanitizers just to make it more available for the people. Definitely a difficult situation for countries already struggling with financial problems. And yeah, with, with this pandemic, it's not helpful at all. All right, so I saved the last one for the most, uh, my friend who is in the most seriously affected city in the world, New York City in the USA which as of today holds up to one quarter of the total infected numbers in the United States. So yeah, I'm definitely very concerned for my friend over there. And you know what he's describing to me, this feels so weird because New York City is, you know, the city that never sleeps and all that, but it's it's a ghost town right now. Um, let's just hear what Vincent has to say. Hey man. Dude, where are you at the moment? Are you in Manhattan or... Manhattan. You're in Manhattan. Uh, Yeah, uh, at downtown downtown Manhattan. Downtown Manhattan. Okay, so like... um, It's... it's, I I presume it's a total lockdown in New York right now, correct? Yeah. Basically, the uh, non-essential business has to shut off. Like, uh, only grocery store pharmacies are allowed to open. Groceries and pharmacy stores. So, but for you guys, are you guys allowed to go out and buy like food and stuff like that? Yeah, I think we, I mean, for the, for the food and stuff, we can still go out and buy. 
but most of the people here they use Amazon or you know all the gross online grocery uh, app to so more like deliveries food. more like delivery okay, okay yeah so so like if you're going out to get groceries do you have like a, a quarantine card or anything that you need to use uh not really we basically just use uh we just wear masks and we also bought gloves um, oh okay yeah so actually we just throw away our glove and mask after each use hmm okay so so basically the whole if if you had like a whole family there there's nothing stopping you guys from going out lah yeah we can go out grocery you can go to play sports in the court but definitely there's no place to hang out like yeah. you can go to the river to have a jog mm. uh, you, can, you can go to park to exercise oh. but even people in park who exercise they have like social distancing yeah uh you know in their mind so whenever they play basketball or what right they will, will keep six feet apart how, how do they play basketball <laughs> six feet apart I... you'll be you'll be so surprised like they right. just pass the ball they, they send don't me even, send yeah. me a video if you can that would be I hilarious can. <laughs> if you can um okay okay because um i spoke to some guys uh, over in the philippines uh, uh-huh. the, uh like they have a pass that only one person in each family can go out once a week to get like groceries. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I thought that was what you guys might have been doing. Oh, you, but... you guys, the, the alternate, is it? Yeah. So like, you, there's only one pass that allows one family member to leave the house. Oh. Yeah. That, so... That's actually very good. Like I, yeah. what I heard is that some, at some places like in China, right? Mm. Um, they, so in the residential block, they actually alternate the people to go down to pick up their delivery. Oh, so okay, you won't okay. have like people sharing you won't meet, the same yeah. elevator. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so I think okay. that's something that they should keep in mind. Like, if you are living in such a huge apartment mm. and then you have shared space. Yeah. Do you know how many days you've been in quarantine? Or Three, lockdown? This is like, this is my third week actually. Third week. And how is that? You So far, you are the one who has been in lockdown the longest. I spoke really? to other people. Yeah, everyone's all in the first and second week. Yeah. Uh huh. So you you are the longest so far. And actually, like... I you know I I I just moved over the weekend. So, so over the weekend we actually, like, drove a van, shared van actually. With, okay. Um, okay. So it was kind of a uh, risky, but I think locking lockdown is after the second week, end of second week, right? You start to feel the pinch. You want to actually go outdoors. Oh shit! And 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 the thing is that, I think there are still a lot of ways to like keep yourself entertained. Though you can like do yoga <laughs> at home, or you can yeah, yeah, yeah. do exercise in your room. I think it's still okay, lah. But I think the 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 most disturbing thing is you, you know that outside, uh, is 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 filled with all these like people who might have coronavirus. Yeah, and yep. you still want to go out and breathe fresh air, so <laughs> although you know that you can keep a safe distance apart from them, uh, there's still a risk that you might touch the thing that they touch. Or yeah, you of might course. walk through a corridor that they breathe. Yeah, and so it's so it's yeah. like a like a mental battle, right? You want to go yeah. out, but you know that there's this danger. Yeah, Correct. but um, so is 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 so far is New York the most heavily hit place in the U.S. or actually? Yeah. I think in the US definitely is uh, but I think the world could be second after Italy. Okay, yeah, yeah. In terms of cities, lah, not countries. In terms of cities, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's super okay. bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, Have you been in Manhattan? I've never even been to like New York. Like I've never been. I wanted to go. <laughs> oh, I should take a photo for you if I get out here. It's like ghost town. Like yeah. it's not New York at all. <laughs> oh gosh. This is like the once in a lifetime, like, okay, I, I mean, don't go out and take photos if you if you, you shouldn't, <laughs> uh, but like, this is once in a lifetime chance where a lot of people are seeing streets like empty for the first time. Like, yeah. it's it's really amazing, but uh, pretty scary as well, isn't it? Scary. Yeah, uh, and this is supposed to be... Yeah, it's like ambulance going everywhere. And yesterday when I actually took a stroll yesterday mm. and I saw this, you know, what, what do you call the thing? The ambulance, the cut. The cut the ambulance the the the, the parad- the paramedics paramedics <laughs> yeah paramedics push right and I saw this white cloth over the cut I oh shit like, oh my god damn yeah, I just I just run away I mean oh <laughs> gosh that's very morbid 
It's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. The fact that this is killing so many people, it's it's yeah, it's ridiculous. But uh, I mean, but I, I guess it's very hard to control though. Like in Singapore, is the 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 cases rise again, right? Yes, like as we are speaking, I just got like informed like we we are at one thousand and ninety six. Um, what with a bit there there was a new cluster in the old folks' home. Firstly, that was in the morning. Uh -huh. And then in the afternoon, there was another 46 cases, I think. But in those 46 cases, 15 are uh, un, what do you call it, uh, unrelated, like unlinked cases. means we cannot find the link of how they got it. So which means potentially there are 15 new spots in Singapore that has this community spread. Yeah. So, huh. so shit just got real. Like, yeah. Once you have 15 unlinked cases, that's when you have to be scared because you don't know where it came from. Yeah. 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 So, um, I'm bracing yeah. over the weekend. Things might get very drastically changed in Singapore. La. For that's sure. what I'm predicting. Um, yeah. I don't know when this video will come out, but uh, I'll try to put some text to update people if it changes or if it doesn't. But... Uh, okay, so so you said like, okay, I don't want to keep you too long, but you said, yeah, okay, worries. food mostly uh -huh. is from Amazon, but um, in terms of like the government, have they been helping you guys in any way? Like, you know, food, money, um, checkups or yeah. anything like that? I think there, there are a, a few measures that, that took, uh, that was in place. Uh, I haven't read through some of the laws that they signed, but what I know is that there is like um, paid, sick paid leave. So they increased the amount of sick paid leave uh, for those people who are caught up with the virus. Yep. And then also they have um, so like credit card that if you cannot okay. pay this, this So like there's this a protection month. from bankruptcy yeah. lah. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah, for all the correct. debts as well. Correct. Okay, so okay. for people who cannot pay, you can pay the next month or after yep. this whole thing goes down. Um, but other than that, oh, I, th I think there is also uh, support for students uh, those yeah. middle school students uh, who who have like free meal for yeah. the whole day. Free. Oh, okay, so okay. For the whole day, they just have to go down to the center to collect. Okay, okay. Which is kind of irony, though. You go down there. And yeah, collect, I, I, and I wouldn't <laughs> want to go down and collect as well. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, some some things like that, lah, are in place. But gro like grocery wise, how are the stores? Are they like packed? I mean, I oh. I've seen like the news. There's a line outside. You have to queue up, yeah. and only a few numbers get to go in. But are the, are the shelves like still full of stuff? Actually, I don't know. I never go down to grocery store for three weeks already. Okay, so um, but you have enough toilet, toilet paper. paper, paper toilet, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the toilet paper right, is a stupid thing. Eh. I, we, we bought heck, like a, what do you call this? Uh, Soviet. Oh, that's serious. <laughs> there, there's no way at all like the kitchen towel. To, oh my gosh, that, to, that to, must to, feel to, like sandpaper. <laughs> Ayah, how precious is your butt, love? Please, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's a that's a good perspective. All right, um, yeah. but anyway, yeah, thanks a lot for your time. I'll check in with you again. Uh, for sure. So far, you are the most endangered person I know. And <laughs> and endangered species. Endangered, yeah. like, endangered species. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, no worries, love. We, we everyone, I think, should just stay at home and uh, take care with all the basic hygiene you know, procedure. I think yeah. I think it's not a big deal un until you go and like uh, ex uh, purposely expose yourself to all these things yeah, outdoors. Yeah. It's stupidity yeah. that will kill us in the end. Yeah, true, true. true. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot, Vincent. I'll catch you soon. Take care, man. All right, take care. Bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, guys. So um, those were all of my friends from the different countries. I hope you guys have um, enjoyed the... The, their feedback and their experiences in their different countries. It's definitely an interesting insight to be able to have friends in these countries and to share with you exactly what's happening on the ground. Uh, but do take it with a pinch of salt because like I said, these are just friends of mine. Uh, they do not represent any government body or any politics at all. We're just every citizens just sharing with each other um, how we're handling this because um, I honestly feel that there's no time for politics at the moment. Uh, what the government needs to do now is act and take care of their citizens. So um, I'm very lucky to be in a country with uh, a great government that looks out for us. 
Um, some people might disagree with their politics, but I, for one, I'm glad that we have a government that acts instead of talks. Um, and we, we've been very lucky to have them. Since the start of this virus, they've been, they've been very um, cautious with the way they've managed the situation, um, always uh, managing the, the panic modes of people and uh, giving out very transparent information um, as clearly and uh, as transparent as they can. And uh, of course, when things got a bit difficult, they started uh, taking care of the citizens by giving out masks to every household um, and giving out free hand sanitizers. Uh, next up, from Sunday onwards, which is tomorrow, we'll be able to get uh, these reusable masks. Um, I'm uh, So each household will also get their share of reusable masks. And of course, uh, they are giving us some uh, money as well just to help us through this difficult time uh, financially. So um, very blessed to have a government like that. Thank you to the government of Singapore. Uh, I hope someone out there from the government manages to hear this one day. But um, I think all the citizens are very thankful uh, for the, what the government has been doing for us. Um, truly blessed. Um, but yes, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, it's definitely a difficult time. Um, hopefully the next episode will be a bit more pleasant on a more pleasant note. Um, I'm not too sure how am I going to get my next guest on the show. Maybe it has to be a web chat or something like that. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Talk Some More. If you've enjoyed this episode, do give it a thumbs up or a like depending on which platform you're on. If you want more content like this, do also consider subscribing and leaving some comments as to what you'd like to hear next. For now, thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next episode.